Hey, good morning, everyone. This is Mike Hesh with Healing Journeys today. And I uh, just want to remind you of a event that we have coming up in May, so you can plan to be there. It is May 21st and 22nd. It is in Phoenix, Arizona. It is a free event. Uh, you will need to register for that event. Um, there is uh, a limited amount of seating. So we would like for you to, uh, to register. And, uh, but I'm not, uh, it's a great facility. It'll be a good time of, uh, we'll have worship and uh, just awesome time to uh, edify one another through the word of God and uh, hear testimonies, revelations. Uh, just, it's gonna be a good time. So I encourage you to come and, hey, I'd love to meet you. <laughs> It'd be a good time. Uh, uh, to, you know, put a face with a comment that I've been getting. So thank you again. Also, I just want to say thank you. I, I do appreciate uh, that you spend your time uh, with me on this Thursday morning. And um, I understand we both benefit from it because we're hearing the word of God and it's being sown into our minds and hearts. And uh, every time I minister uh, these uh, for these streams, I'm believing with you that you're going to receive truth. And why is that so important? Because Jesus said you would know the truth and the truth would make you free. Amen. So let's just jump right into it. Um, I have a good word today. Also a testimony, I think uh, it will help illustrate what I want to share today. Uh, I believe I titled it, um, A Weapon to Remove Lingering Symptoms. You know, um, in my testimony last week, uh, in our live stream last week, I uh, talked about how, uh, how once, I, once my heart shifted and I believed what the truth said, it produced a response in me that rejected the lie of the enemy. And I knew in that moment that I was free from sickness and disease, that I was totally healed. And I felt that way, but not in the sense of like my five senses, but in the sense like uh, you feel something deep inside that you know it's done, it's accomplished. I put the link to that teaching in the description below, and I encourage you uh, to check that out if you have not watched that, uh, because it, I'm kind of, uh, what I'm going to share today is expanding on uh, those points, and uh, but, you know, it's a standalone topic as well. So um, I wanted to relate that to you because so many times we have these lingering symptoms after we have believed, you know, think about it. Uh, the revelation I had and shared last week uh, was I thought I was believing, but when I saw in the word that it says that, uh, you know, if you believe you have received, I realized since I had not received that I really hadn't believed. And although I could have been condemned. I saw that as a truth. And that truth made me free. It encouraged my heart to continue on seeking or looking to what my father was trying to tell me all along to lead me to that place where those symptoms in my body, even though I was healed by the stripes of Jesus, those lingering symptoms that were holding me back and oppressing me, that I could have been free of those too. And that's what my father led me to understand through his word. And that moment of transition came really as an exercise of the knowledge that I had received, the revelation that I received, but it was an exercise of authority, of power, using the weapon that God had given to me. And the moment I exercised that, I was separated from the oppression of the devil and what happened as a result of that? I, my, I was healed. I was totally healed. I felt like I was healed, but I still had all the symptoms. So this, was, this is the awesome point, was that 
now I also became disconnected from the lingering symptoms. In other words, I knew in my heart that they were not mine anymore. And as I said last week, and I encourage you to watch that, that uh, I began to live as the healed person I was in Christ Jesus, okay? So uh, that brings me to one of my favorite verses in the whole Bible. This was, a, this was a, not just a game changer for me because I don't see life as a game. Uh, this, was a, this was a life changing revelation to my heart that really freed me to walk in power and authority that I had been given through salvation, uh, through the finished work of Jesus Christ. And uh, so turn with me, if you will, if you want to, uh, to Acts 10.38. We've talked a lot about this, and the reason I do is because, I'm going to read that scripture next, is because for this purpose, it says, uh, Jesus came. And let's read this. It's very good. You know, uh, what I think is interesting, too, is Peter, he meets these Gentiles for the first time, and he, he could have shared anything he wanted with those people. But the Spirit led him to communicate what we're about to read. And to me, that is so significant. You don't have to be in church for 20 years before this message can come alive to your heart. See, that's what happened to me. I was in church, well, my whole life, really, uh, more than 20 years, and this message never came alive to my heart. But that's not our Father's heart. He's always bringing this message. In fact, these Gentiles who Peter went to, this is the first thing that he shared with them. I think that's significant. In verse 38, it says, he's talking about how, I'll read verse 36. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all, that that word, I say, you know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. And this was the message, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Wow, let's not read over that. The Holy Ghost and power. And it says, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Let me ask you, are you part of all? See, it's easy to read over that word and just look back to the people that Jesus, that we have testimony of Jesus healing and delivering. But wow, this is so much more than that. This includes me. So how does it include me and you? It includes us that by understanding that Jesus took care of the spiritual oppression that was hindering people uh, from walking in health. Or it, you could even say this, it was delivering them from their oppressing symptoms so that they could be free to walk in health. You know, turn with me to, um, let's see, 1 John, 1 John chapter 3. This is this really making the same point. In 1 John 3, um, I'm going to read into it a little bit. It says, verse 7, Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. Now listen, this is the point. The devil sinneth from the beginning. Now listen to his next statement. He says, For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Wow, you put this together with Acts 10.38. What was a work of the devil? What was the devil destroying in man? His physical health. He was uh, killing people through sickness and disease. And Jesus was manifested for this purpose, to stop that, to destroy that, to undo that word in, um, if you look it up, that word destroy 
there means to undo, to loose, to break down. That's pretty powerful. That's what Jesus came to do. So when Jesus, think about it. If you just, and we've had this uh, discussion many times before, I love it, but um, if you just go out and pull a weed in your yard or mow it over, you won't see the weed anymore. But have you removed the weed? No. You have to pull it up by the root and then you won't see it ever again, okay? Now that's what Jesus recognized was necessary to completely remove sickness and disease, was he dealt with it at the root, the spiritual root. And how did he do that? He had power. What kind of power did he have? Well, just like you and me, God gave him weapons that were spiritual. They had more power than the power that the enemy has. Go with me. You know, we possess that same power. Jesus has given that to us. Just so don't isolate yourself from Acts 10, 38 uh, and say, well, that was Jesus. You know, he was anointed by the Holy Ghost and, and he was the son of God. Well, who are you? You're a child of the Most High God. You're a child of the same father that Jesus was a child of. Amen? The difference being, though, uh, Jesus was born physically through the Father. He was the only begotten of the Father, where we are born through the Spirit, through the finished work of Jesus Christ. And we become children, or as it says in, uh, in Romans 8, we're adopted into the family as children, not just adopted people, but we're, we're his children. Amen? Where did I say to go? Let's see. Um, Luke 10. Luke chapter 10. So Luke chapter 10. This is, this is an awesome uh, verse here. I'm going to read a few because this is important. You know, Jesus had sent out the 12 uh, first. He in, uh, talks about this in, uh, in, in Luke 9 and also in uh, Matthew chapter 10. You can go there and read that. But, you know, uh, Jesus said that, hey, uh, the harvest is ready, but the laborers are few. And he said, let's pray that the father would send laborers into his harvest. And then the very next phrase or the very next verse, uh, we see God putting that on Jesus's heart and he commissions laborers, 12 of them, his disciples, to go into that harvest and to begin, uh, you, know, you know, harvesting or reaping is the word I was looking for. And so, but after that, Jesus sent more. He sent uh, 70 more disciples uh, into that same harvest. And listen to their testimony when they returned here. I'm in Luke chapter 10, beginning in verse 17. It says, And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. And this is important. Listen, behold, I give unto you. I'm going to say that to you. Behold, Jesus gives unto you. You're a you. This verse is talking to you because you're a you. It says, behold, I give unto you power, power. That's what God gave Jesus in Acts 10, 38. He anointed him with the Holy Ghost and power. He's given that to you. It says, to and power to do what? Awesome question. Power to do what? I heard you. Power to do what? Power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all, not some, over all the power of the enemy. Why? So nothing by any means should cause you an injustice or hurt you. Notwithstanding, Jesus said, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you and me, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. You know, it's because we are intimately, eternally connected to the Father that this power can work, that this power has a place in our lives. Boy, that's, that's 
man, we should all be jumping up and down about that. That is awesome. That means we're not victims anymore. Okay. We're not victims. We have power over all the power of the enemy. That is more than awesome. That is wow. That is wow. I like that. So think about this for a second. Uh, and I'm going to get to a, an important testimony, but I want to lay this foundation first. So important. So notice God gave this power to Jesus Christ, and it was in the spirit that this power was contained. Now, Jesus said that he gave this same power not only to the 12, but to the 70. And the 70 rejoiced, and they saw that, wow, the devils even obey us. Notice, the devils even obey us. And if you read in uh, uh, earlier in um, chapter 10 that uh, of, of Matthew, there was all sorts of healing that took place. So what are the disciples here saying? Look, we cast out devils and the symptoms left. We laid hands on the sick and they recovered because the devils left. They cast out the oppressing spirit through laying on of hands. Now, many of them weren't focused on like devil, the name of Jesus, get out of him. Just like Jesus. Jesus wasn't saying in the name of Jehovah, get out of them. No. Let's take, for example, the woman with an issue of blood. The power that was in Jesus, he didn't even know that she touched him in the sense uh, that you know, he was waiting for her to touch her so that he could release it. No, the draw came through her belief. Jesus said, woman, go in peace. Your faith has made you whole. She was the one that drew that power. Now, what happened when that power came into her? It cast out the oppressor that was causing her to uh, have an issue of blood. And the issue of blood, the whole nine yards left. It was gone out of her. But why? Because she believed. And she didn't know all the details. She didn't know everything about it. She just, her faith made the draw on the power. And what happened as a result? She was set free. She, as I shared last week, she felt healed in her body. And that word felt, as I talked about last week, she knew. It's the same word. She knew, just like you uh, know uh, your name, or just like you know, uh, you know, like a man knows a woman, or, you know, th in the same way, it's an intimate connection that's undeniable to your heart. Amen? This is awesome. So now think about this. We have this power. And these 12, I mean, these 70 came back and they're rejoicing. And Jesus said, you have power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Does that mean we can go out and step on snakes and not be hurt? Well, that's true. In fact, I have a testimony about stepping on a rattler and it couldn't, it couldn't even bite me. That's the power that I had, although I wasn't even aware it was there. Um, what about scorpions? You know, I used to live in uh, Tucson, Arizona, and all the time I worked outdoors. Uh, all the time you'd see these scorpions or, uh, you know, you'd open up a wall that you're working on and there would be, a, you know, scorpions in there, you know, so and never did I get bit at all ever. Now, is he talking about physical snakes and physical scorpions? Not really. In fact, what he's talking about is the serpent, and that serpent is the devil, and the devil only produces after his own kind, and that's what all the evil spirits are that follow him. They're serpents, and they're scorpions, just like it's described in uh, Revelation, and the sting that they have, the bite that they have is poisonous, and it creates pain in your life, physical and spiritual, emotional, Mental, it has the whole nine yards, but Jesus used these terms symbolically to, to reveal to them that they had power over anything that could cause them harm or an injustice. That's an awesome thing to know. And he gave that to you. He gave that to me. 
And all we need to do is live and exercise in that. Do you know, I'm going to get to this point in a moment, but the Spirit will lead us and guide us in the use of that. And that's where it's effective. Notice this. And he said, and over all the power of the enemy. It's not an addition to what he's saying is he's like summarizing serpents and scorpions and saying, yes, over all the power of the enemies. Those are two enemies. Don't you consider a poisonous serpent your enemy? Well, if you don't, you should. They're not nothing to be a friend of. They're they're uh, they're corrupted uh, uh, in the creation by the by the fall of man, and they are there to harm us. They not there to benefit us. If a snake bites you, are you going to uh, feel better? No, you're not going to feel better at all. If a scorpion bites you, are you going to uh, start rejoicing and have a party? No, you're going to be hurting big time. So. The point he's making and the point I want to emphasize for us is we have the same power of Acts 10.38 that Jesus had, he gave to us, okay? And what's the purpose of that power? power? To destroy the works of the devil. We don't want any work of the devil in our life, none whatsoever. Sickness and disease is a work of the devil, okay? Just stop for a moment. In case you might be, uh, in case you were raised in some of the churches that I have was raised in and uh, and visited after uh, for many years, um, they call sickness and disease uh, God's instruction or correction, folks. That is wrong. It, it there's no there's no life in sickness and disease. It's death, and the Bible calls. Uh, in um, uh, Hebrews, it says that the devil is the one with the power of death. So to uh, attribute sickness or disease to God is to call God the devil. You'd never do that. I know you wouldn't. And when that finally clicked in my small little brain up here, I realized, wow, I didn't understand much more, but I knew, gosh, sickness and disease is not from God because it hinders life. It doesn't release life. Amen? So there we have an opponent, and he's called an enemy, and we have power, but how do you exercise this power? How do you use this power? Go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, this, these, these verses are very powerful. Um, it says, I'm going to start in verse three of uh, chapter, let's see, what is it? Chapter 10, 2 Corinthians 10, verse three. It says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. In the testimony I'm about to share, I'm going to bring out this point. You know, when you get a physical symptom that hangs on, like me, when I start, when I first got sick um, in the year 2000, when I first got sick, and I prayed and rebuked and commanded and did everything I was supposed to do, um, and nothing happened, what did I do? Well, I started tr dealing with sickness and disease after the flesh. And just like it says right here, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. And why don't we war after the flesh? Because Jesus said the flesh profits nothing. And it says that when we use the things of the carnal, the spiritual, I mean, the carnal fleshly weapons, it says they are not subject to the law of God. Neither can they be. Okay. So in other words, there's no way to use the power that we have been given in Christ if we're trying to do it after the flesh. It, we're just going to end up opposing ourselves and becoming very frustrated. Yes, that's a testimony. <laughs> I was so frustrated trying to get healed, trying to get delivered, trying everything I heard and read and studied, and but to no success. But we're going to hear the good part of that. So God gave us, listen to what it says, 
For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they're not in the flesh, but they are mighty through God to pull down strongholds. And what is a stronghold? It's a stronghold is something that has a strong hold on you or something that you have a strong hold on. See, sickness and disease, once it's been in our life for a while, uh, can we can actually be holding on to that because we're focused on it so much we can't hear the truth to set us free. That we are so focused on getting rid of it that we are totally in the flesh and we're not able to hear the spirit. We're not able to rest. So not only is, does the sickness have a disease on us or the, I mean, uh, a hold on us, but now the thoughts that the enemy has spoken to us, we now have a strong hold on the disease itself because our mind is locked in on it. Notice what it says here. Uh, the weapons of our warfare are not in the flesh. They're not carnal, but they're mighty through God to pull down strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Folks, do you realize that if we were to do that, uh, verse 5, if we were to live that every day, every moment of every day, we would not be needing uh, the weapons to recover ourselves out of the snare of the devil. Because by recognizing the thoughts and addressing the thoughts and bringing them in obedience to the word, which is a weapon God gave us. He gave us that ability through the Spirit, the power to recognize thoughts that are not of Him because the Spirit is leading and guiding us to truth continually. And as we yield to the Spirit in our daily life, a major weapon He's given to us, that weapon will cause us to hear, and then we use that weapon to do what? To tear down that stronghold. Do you know God is only in Ephesians chapter 6? It talks about, let's go there. In Ephesians chapter 6, this is an awesome point. You might say, boy, everything he says is an awesome point. Well, I think God's word is awesome. And I don't think there's any point in it that isn't awesome. So in chapter 6, it says, uh, verse 10, notice what it says here. Finally, my brethren, be strong in your own strength and in the power of your own flesh. Is that what your Bible says? No, mine doesn't say that either. Mine says this. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. See, that's the power we've been given that will cause us to triumph over every weapon, device, of the enemy. That's what God has given us. Listen to this. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we don't wrestle against principalities, but, oh wait, we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world and against spiritual wickedness. That's what we, that's what our challenge is. Not flesh and blood, not the symptom in your body, okay? That is a fruit of the enemy that's oppressing you. It's not your physical body that's the problem. It's the oppressor behind the physical symptoms that you're experiencing. You remove that oppression and there'll be no strength or life or whatever you wanna call it for that sickness or disease to remain. It will be separated from your life. Now, the point I wanted to make was, these weapons that God gave us, there's really only one offensive weapon in all of this. And that is in verse, I'll read 16 and 17. He says, above all, taking the shield of faith, where which you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation 
and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So let's put this all together so far. So we have, uh, we have weapons, it says, that are not carnal. They are not of the flesh, but they're mighty through God, and they pull down these strongholds, okay? Jesus said he gave us power over all the power of the enemy, where nothing, nothing, not even one thing, uh, can, cause us an injust can cause us an injustice without us allowing it, okay? And then it tells us, then it tells us that we were given these, this power or these weapons to destroy the works of the devil, okay? Now, all of these weapons, all of this power that we have is activated through one thing. Uh, in 2 Peter chapter 1, he tells us that we become partakers of the divine nature through the knowledge of the word of God. So if you don't understand the authority, the power, the privileges that God has given us in Christ, then you're going to be suffering unduly uh, the enemy's attacks. In other words, you're going to feel like a victim. You're going to be praying to God. You're going to be begging God. You're going to be trying to do everything to be free from your challenge, but you will remain unaffected because I mean, unchanged, because God is sending his word to heal you and deliver you from your destructions. See, it's that revelation of the word, the knowing of the truth that makes you free. Now, this is the testimony I wanted to share. It's, it's awesome. It's a great testimony. Okay. Uh, a few weeks ago, probably, I don't know, four weeks ago, uh, my wife, Caroline, uh, was, you know, she said, man, my, you know, um, my leg is bothering me a little bit. And, uh, I said, you know, what do you think? She says, I don't know, maybe, uh, I strained it in one of my workouts or something. So she, and she said, you know, nothing, it's going to go away. She said, no problem. And I said, okay. So we went hiking one day. Uh, we like to hike a lot. So we were hiking out one day and she stopped and she said, uh, uh, she was, I heard her talking to her knee. I said, what's going on? She goes, uh, man, my knees, uh, my knee just like hurt all of a sudden. And so she said, I just, you know, I was just telling that pain to get out. So anyways, we walked on and I think it happened one more time on that walk. And, uh, and then we came back and, and, uh, you know, she never mentioned it again, uh, after that uh, to me. So I thought it was no problem, but, uh, she came to me about a week later and she said, you know, Mike, she said, uh, something is, uh, bothering my leg. She said, uh, when I sit down, I'm fine, but if I try and get up or stand up, it's, it's really hurts. And, uh, she said, uh, you know, I just like to be free from it. And, you know, I paused for a moment uh, you know, seeking the Lord's direction. And, and, you know, just one thought came into my mind and I told her, I said, you know, Caroline, I want you to remember the word says that all things are possible to the one that believes. And, uh, so I prayed over her and I, I, uh, as I, you know, felt led, I commanded the, uh, the pain to leave her body, uh, to get out of her leg and to not return. And uh, I just let it go. And uh, she said, okay, and walked away. Well, that was like, um, you know, on a Monday or a Tuesday. And then, uh, you know, later in the week, I noticed that, uh, you know, I, uh, she dropped something on the kitchen floor and she just stood there and looked at it. <laughs> and I said, aren't you going to pick it up? She says, no, I'm not going to pick it up. And uh, I'm like, why? She goes, because it's too hard to get up. And I thought, well, that shouldn't be. And uh, so I just picked it up and I, and I just let it go because I'm, you know, I realized that, uh, you know, she, like me, uh, has to make decisions and she's got to choose for herself uh, to walk in the power and authority that God has given her. So I give her space to do that. I don't tell her what to do. I encourage her. And uh, I reminded her that that's not part of her anymore. And so anyway, uh, we were invited to uh, meet up a, with a friend 
you know, it's about an hour away and we drove to meet them. And, and I noticed that uh, getting into the car, she was like very cautious, like, uh, and very deliberate in every motion as she sat down in the car. And then we sat in the car for an hour and we got to our destination and we were meeting a friend for dinner down there. And so she gets out in the same way, very delicately. And, uh, you know, and then she, we get into the restaurant and, you know, where we ran into some other people that my friend knew and we chatted there for a few minutes. And uh, then she, you know, she's going up to the table and she's kind of like, uh, she's not walking normally. I can tell that she's favoring her leg. And I'm thinking, you know, Father, I just thank you for encouraging and strengthening her to resist that. And so, um, so we, we sat there, you know, a couple hours, we had dinner and fellowship. And uh, so, so uh, my buddy gets up and we're, you know, we getting ready to leave and she's still sitting there. <laughs> and I'm like walking away from the table thinking she's right behind me. And she's not. Uh, she's still sitting at the table and I come back and I say to her, I said, uh, Hey, let's go. What's, what's up? She says, I just need a minute. And then she stands up and she like, cannot stand on that leg. And, uh, so, so I, uh, give her my arm and she's walking out and I tell her, I said, Caroline, this cannot stay. This is not part of you. And she says, I know it's not part of me. Well, as she was, uh, as she was walking, well, hobbling out, I think if she had crutches, she would have been using them. But uh, she said, uh, you know, she got in the back seat of the car because, you know, we were taking our friend back to his place. And uh, wow, she was like, she could hardly get in. And I could tell on her face that she was in, in excruciating pain. And uh, so she sat down and we went to my friends and he invited us in and we were initially going to hang out for a while. And uh, but then, uh, you know, I just didn't have a witness. I thought we should go back. And Caroline said the same thing. She said, yeah, let's just go back. So she got into the front seat. Same kind of thing. Just just grimacing in uh, pain. And and I could see that she was kind of like shaking. And I thought because it was cold that night, I thought maybe she just caught a chill uh, being outside. And, um, but as we're driving home, this is a point I want to share with you. One of them is, uh, as we're driving home, I have this inside of me that is starting to stir, stir. And it's a, uh, it starts out with just like an irritation, you know, like, man, devil, you're, you're, you know, you, you can't do that to my wife. Well, it's an hour drive. And by the time we got home, I was indignant against what the devil was doing. In fact, the Spirit of God was stirring me that whole time uh, and not telling me what to do, but reminding me and encouraging me of the power and the authority and the weapon that God had given me to defeat just such an attack, okay? So, we, you know, I helped her inside, uh, you know, we got up the stairs into our place and, and uh, you know, I told her to sit down and she's just, she's in so much pain that she's like shaking, you know, and uh, so I told her to sit down. I said, this is, this is going tonight. It's not going to stay another second. So uh, in Jesus name, I just, prayed as I was directed. And I, I released that power from Luke 10, 19. And I exercised that power that I was given by God for just such circumstances. And I told that to get out of her leg, to leave, to never come back. Okay. And I told her, let's go to bed. It was late, you know, so I said, let's go to bed. So we went to bed. And she said, you know, and she hobbled to her room. There was no, uh, you know, immediate change or nothing. But I knew that it was over, just like I shared last week. I knew that it was over. I didn't know when she would receive it, but I knew that that devil could not stay in my house, okay? I'm the head over this house. God, God appointed me that. It's not something that I chose 
It's something God uh, appointed me as, and I was not going to allow that enemy to reign in our household. So the next morning she woke up and she said, it was like 50% better. And I'm like, of course, and it's not going to go the other direction ever again. And so by, we went hiking on uh, Sunday, so yeah, Sunday afternoon, we went for a hike. And uh, so it completely left her gone. Now, I want to back up and explain something here, what happened. Because it's easy to just share that testimony. And then everybody goes, wow, will you pray for me? <laughs> hey, I did the same thing, you know, but that's not the answer. See, the Spirit of God directed me, and He didn't direct me in the beginning. He directed me after she had it for a while, okay? There was something, there's a few things that occurred that I want to point out. And if she was here today, she would be uh, telling you the exact same story and uh, because we talked about it. You know, I like to learn. Like I asked her all about it. When did the change came? What were you thinking in your heart? You know, what, did, what was the Lord talking to you about? All these things. Because I wanted to understand, not just for her benefit, but for my benefit, and also to be able to help others. That's why I'm teaching on this today, because I think it'll help all of us. So, uh, we, uh, you know, we went hiking on a Sunday. She didn't have a single problem. So, here's, here's what I want to share that connects kind of all these dots together. It's, uh, you know, very important. See, when she first came to me, uh, it was easy for both of us to think that, you know, she had strained it, that she had been working out and she had strained it, okay? But I asked her afterwards, you know, after everything had happened and she was back to normal, uh, I asked her about that and she said, you know, I've thought about that and I, I don't know of anything that I did physically to cause that. She said she couldn't think of anything. She asked the Lord to show her, nothing came to her mind. So here was, here's how the enemy takes opportunity. He starts with just a little pain, a little discomfort. Maybe it started in her knee that day and then she maybe have favored it or whatever. And, uh, but so the enemy starts with one little thing and then we just give in to it. What did she do? She did nothing about it. You know, she said that pain just gradually increased over a couple of weeks. And I, I said, what'd you do about it? She said, nothing. I thought it would just go away. I thought I had strained it or something, even though I couldn't put my finger on any particular moment. And see, that's what we do oftentimes. We allow something to remain in us because of like what I talked about earlier. We become insensitive to the leading of the Spirit of God because our mind's occupied with other things. We're not capturing every thought and bring it in into the obedience of Christ, okay? And that's something we need to be diligent about doing. Both Caroline and I help each other all the time. You know, we'll say something and we'll say, hey, where'd that thought come from? And we're like, yeah, that wasn't from God. And so we help each other. And you can help yourself. If, if you don't have someone living with you or that you fellowship regularly with, put up a note card, you know, or uh, put it on the screen of your phone. Whenever you open your phone, have that in the background, a picture that says, capture every thought, bring it into obedience. So that was the first thing. She had not brought those thoughts into captivity about it. And uh, she wasn't listening to what the Spirit was telling her about it. She just thought she'd manage it on her own. Okay? We all do that. I, I describe myself. That's what I did. When I you know, prayed and nothing happened. I said, well, I'll get it from here, dad. No problem. Uh, it was a big problem. I can, you cannot destroy spiritual weapons with physical weapons. It, it's always, I'll save you a lot of time. It's always un unsuccessful. 100% of the time, the flesh will fail. 100% of the time. There's not a half a percent, not a quarter percent, not one one thousandth of a percent. No, 100% of the time, the flesh will fail. So don't even go there. It'll, it'll be a great benefit to you to avoid that. Amen? So the second point I want to bring out is that 
that when she first finally came to me and realized, wow, this is bigger than what I thought it was. It's getting worse, progressively worse. The first thing the Spirit ministered to me was that all things were possible to her if she would believe. See, even though you have power given to you, you have authority given to you, uh, you have within you everything you need to be victorious. If you don't believe or know about those weapons, or you know about them, but you don't believe in them to the point where that you're living in them, which is belief is a is an action. It's not it's not uh, dormant. It's believing is a verb. It's it's action. It's in action. So when you believe something, there is the corresponding results that come from that belief. So when I shared with her, all things were possible to the one that believes, I think it encouraged her that, wow, maybe, maybe I'm not believing like I should be or like I know to be about this challenge here. And so that's all I said to her and I did pray over her as I would over my own flesh. But, you know, uh, because her heart didn't embrace it right away, I think that the enemy just increased his attack. He pushed up his game. And that right there uh, can affect your heart to where you're thinking, wow, I guess maybe I need more than prayer. Now, let me, my, let me share something about my wife, Caroline. She is uh, one tough gal. <laughs> You know, uh, in the, I think it was the 90s, the devil attacked her with gallbladder uh, attacks. And I saw her go through some of those attacks. And my goodness, uh, she was just doubled up, curled up in a ball on the floor. And she couldn't even move her hands or feet. That's how intense the pain was. And, uh, but she said, no, I am not going to the doctor God gave me my gallbladder to keep, and I'm keeping it. And uh, she wouldn't give in. And, you know, she's never had it after. I think those came, you know, they, they came and went, like within a year, you know, where she had that issue, and they've never returned since. And, uh, but she's one tough gal in a good way. Uh, and she's tough, like she's strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. She's not going to let go of it just because the devil's uh, poking her. So anyway, she hung on. And so when she was hurting, I knew that, that uh, this was an intense pain for her to say, uh, you know, I am, this is killing me. You know, where she said, this is the worst pain I've ever had. I knew it was bad. And, uh, but again, I think both of us needed to get to a place where we were focused in on, this is the devil. This is not a, a sore muscle. This is not a, a broken bone. This is a lie from the devil. And you know, that hour long drive home in the car, her in pain and me in, uh, you know, in the spirit trying to, you know, hear exactly what the spirit was leading and just letting that boil within me till we got home and we said no to it. So I want to point this out. You know, even though I prayed over and cast out that spirit out of her leg, you know, it didn't leave instantly. The symptoms didn't leave instantly, but she got up out of that chair. She quit shaking. So I knew in my heart that she had received that that was no longer going to be there. She did not know how long. I know that she said she didn't sleep well that night because the pain was still keeping her awake. Uh, but she never let go that that problem has been cast out, so it cannot stay. And by Sunday, like I said, we went and hiked that afternoon. So even though we exercise power, even, I mean, even though we have power, and God's given us a weapon, we must use that weapon to get rid of those lingering symptoms. And in other words, once you, like, think about it. If you were to do in slow motion, I'm going to use an example of a weapon. If you were to fire a rifle uh, at 
you know, if you were to fire a rifle at a at game at an animal, you know, a thousand yards away, there's going to be a delay from the time that bullet leaves the end of that barrel and before it hits the animal and the animal falls. Okay. Now there's a time space there. Okay. But once you pull that trigger and you've properly aimed, there's no option for that animal. It's going down. Okay. And the same thing is true when we have the weapon that God has given to us and we release that power inspired by spirit, not by our flesh, but when we're inspired by the spirit, that's like the, uh, the gunpowder, uh, you know, behind the bullet that pushes the bullet out. That's what happens. You know, when the spirit leads us, it's the power behind the weapon he's given us, which in this case, that was us releasing that through our words and commanding that uh, devil to loose and leave her. And that's exactly what happened. So it couldn't stay. But the first place that it had to leave was her heart and mind. And that's where it left first. And it was like holding on, you know, like with its, you know, fingertips, just still trying to hurt. And then finally, there was nothing left for it to hold on to. You know, oftentimes we release power, we command things to happen. And we're, instead of just moving on, what do we do? We're looking, we're peeking while we're praying is what I call it. We're looking to see if there's any change. And if, if there's not, then we don't carry on in our heart. We don't release it in our heart. We stay focused on it. Instead of trusting that what the Spirit has inspired us to do, the Spirit will accomplish for us. That's a very, very important point. That's what we need to believe. That's why belief is so important, because it's not us that's making it happen. It's what the Spirit's able to do because we believe. It actually releases the Spirit to, uh, what would you call it, uh, to, uh, to fulfill the demand that we're placing on it through our belief. So anyway, I think that's, uh, that's an awesome testimony. I wanted to share it with you because it's such a good illustration of the application of these scriptures and how it looks in person when you apply it to yourself. And uh, powerful, powerful, powerful testimony. So I just want to encourage you, God has given you this power. So use that power. Use the weapon that he's given you against those lingering symptoms, but let it be inspired or powered by the spirit, not by your flesh saying, I'm sick and tired of feeling bad. I want to get rid of this already. I want to get back to doing X, Y, and Z. No, that's true. That's God's heart for you. He doesn't want you to be bound in the way that you are. That's why he provided you with the deliverance in Christ Jesus. See, you are already healed. Caroline was already healed. The devil was the one who brought the oppression into her leg that was hindering her. And that's what I want to encourage you, that you don't have to allow that to remain. You don't have to let that happen. You can rise up and say, no, to that weapon that the enemy has formed against you. Amen? Amen. So uh, let's see here. I think, um, yeah, I, I think that's good. I think we're going to just, uh, I think I'll just wrap it up there. And, um, but I do, I, I feel like uh, the Spirit is just leading me. I want to just pray this over you. Father, in Jesus' name, every person that will watch this video, every person that's listening now, Father, I ask that you would take these truths from your word, that they would become uh, quickened to the minds and hearts of all that are listening to it, and that they will see that you have given them power, you have given them authority over all the power of the enemy, Father, and that they will seek your guidance uh, and your strength behind that in Jesus' name. And I thank you for doing that, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen.
So I just want to remind you about uh, the uh, conference that we're going to have. It's a free conference. It is uh, May 21st, 22nd of this year in Phoenix, Arizona. It's completely free. You go to the website and get all the details, um, healingjourneystoday.com, and register there so you can be assured of a place there. So anyway, thank you for joining me. God bless you. And uh, I hope to see you next week for another, uh, whatever our father is going to lead us into next week. It'll be good. So God bless you in Jesus name. Amen.